Hi there, I'm super excited to have a chance to talk to you about this particular topic. It's a topic that I spend quite a bit of time talking about with my clients. I actually just got off of a call with a client and she inspired me to talk about insulin resistance. It was something that she had been told about, but no one actually bothered to really explain it to her or tell her how she could manage it with a number of things. And so I thought, you know what? She's probably not the only one. So I wanted to make this video so that you would have some information that you can dive deeper into or talk to your healthcare team about so that you know how to manage insulin resistance with PCOS. It's estimated that about 75% of people with PCOS have insulin resistance. So if you have PCOS, there's a really good chance that you have insulin resistance. So it's incredibly important to know if you do and know which things you can do to improve it and improve your insulin sensitivity. We'll talk a bit more about what all of that means in just a moment. So what exactly is insulin resistance? As its name suggests, it's where your cells become resistant to, no longer respond in the manner that you'd expect them to, to insulin. Now, insulin is a hormone. It's a messenger. It lets your cells know that there is sugar within the blood that would like to come inside the cell where your cell can use it for energy. Remember, sugar equals energy. Many of our foods break down and our bodies, as they break down and absorb them, our bodies reconfigure them into a sugar, um, break it down into a sugar, and that's what gives us energy. So if you're insulin resistant, your insulin isn't having that effect on your cells. So your cells are likely, to a degree at least, going without that energy, which explains why so many people with PCOS also experience fatigue. Makes sense, right? If the energy in your blood is not getting into your cells, you're gonna feel tired because your cells aren't getting the energy that they need. That's not the only way insulin resistance impacts PCOS or causes some PCOS symptoms. Um, when we are insulin resistant, our insulin goes up, our blood sugar goes up, and that actually will start to have an effect on other parts of our body. It'll have an effect on the ovaries. And within the ovaries, its effect is that it actually increases the production of androgens, which are known as the male hormones. Everyone has them not just men, despite their name, despite what they're called, despite how we refer to them, but in high amounts, they can um, result in some of the symptoms that a lot of people with PCOS don't particularly enjoy. Things like acne or um, facial hair growth or um, male pattern baldness, as it's called, hair loss. Um, so that's another reason why managing your insulin is going to be super helpful with PCOS because it's going to help not overstimulate your ovaries to cause them to release these excess androgens that are behind so many of the symptoms. Another effect of insulin resistance is acanthosis nigricans. I always mispronounce that, so if I mispronounced it this time, I apologize, I really do. <laughs> Essentially, it's where you get these dark, velvety patches in the folds of your skin. I've seen where so many women have been told, well, when they were children, that they were dirty or they just needed to clean more. And that wasn't it at all. It was likely an early sign of insulin resistance. So managing the insulin resistance will likely result in an improvement in those dark pel pelvity, <laughs> velvety patches. That same insulin resistance also can leave you with an, um, an increased risk of things like binge eating. Um, it will make you likely uh, have very, very strong, intense cravings for carbohydrates or sugar. So if you've experienced that, it's not because you're greedy. It's not because you are addicted to sugar. It's likely because you're experiencing the effects of insulin resistance. It can also increase your risk of cardiovascular disease and gestational diabetes and diabetes down the road. So again, you can see why it's so important to manage insulin resistance if you have PCOS. How is insulin resistance diagnosed? Good question, happy you ask. <laughs> so it is diagnosed through blood tests. Your doctor, please go to your doctor, <laughs> um, will test your insulin levels, your blood sugar levels, 
And they can also test something called your hemoglobin A1C, which gives them an idea of what your blood sugar has looked like over the course of three months. Um, they can also check your oral glucose, or they can give you an oral glucose tolerance test. And that will also let you know how your body responds to large amounts of sugar or glucose um, and let you know if you might be insulin resistant. So what can you do if you find out that you are insulin resistant? First, be relieved because you have a, a name to what you're experiencing. And if you have a name to it, if you know what it is, then you can address it. You don't have to just be kind of shooting in the dark, figuring out, you know, based on what you read on Google um, and what works for other people. You get to decide for yourself what works for you because now you have answers. Now that you're done rejoicing and being relieved that you have answers about what you can do now that you know what might be going on, let's talk about the actual things that you can do to increase your insulin sensitivity, decrease your insulin resistance, and overall just improve your well-being. The first area that you and I will explore together is nutrition. This includes both foods and supplements. So when it comes to food, there tends to be a focus on restriction. You already know that's not the way I like to do anything. I haven't found it to be beneficial, so I'm not going to recommend that you cut out sugar or that you cut out carbs. I've only ever seen that backfire, so I don't recommend it. What I have seen work without deprivation is focusing in on balance. So balance just means that when you do have carbohydrate-rich foods, when you do have foods that are very high in sugar, you pair them with protein, fat, and fiber. Those other nutrients are actually going to slow down how quickly your body breaks down those carbohydrates, how quickly your body breaks down that sugar, and it's going to give your body a chance to deal with it more slowly so that your blood sugar and your insulin do not spike and you don't have the same experience. So rather than elimination, focus in on balance. I actually have a guide where I go into a lot more detail and give an example of how to mix and match things, how to pair things in a way that's going to be supportive and beneficial for your insulin and for your blood sugar. Okay, so now let's talk about supplementation. This one I get a little bit excited about. <laughs> There's one particular supplement, it's called inositol, and I recommend it to, yeah, I can't think of anyone I haven't recommended it to who I've worked with who has PCOS. I love this supplement and so do my clients. So essentially, it helps to um, make your cells more sensitive to insulin so that, again, we talked about it, the blood sugar, the sugar in your blood is able to get into your cells and do the work where it's supposed to do the work instead of just floating around outside of your cells. And so as a result, a lot of my clients have experienced a number of things that the research back. So they have noticed that their cravings for sugar and carbohydrates goes down. Um, they've noticed that ovulation improves and becomes more regular, which makes their periods more regular. There's also research that shows that it can improve A quality. So if you're trying to conceive, it's great for that. Um, there's some research around its effect on fatty liver disease. So this all around is my favorite supplement for people with PCOS. There's one particular brand that I tend to recommend, and that's Theralogics. I absolutely recommend that you get it directly from the manufacturer. Um, and if you use this code 100368, you will get a reduced price. And so that makes it a little bit more accessible. That makes it a little bit more affordable. Definitely worth exploring at the very least. Next up, we have rest. Now when I'm talking about rest, I'm talking about both sleep and I'm talking about stress management because both put us into that rest and digest stage where our body can heal and really thrive. So let's start with sleep. Sleep is so important to our hormone health and of course, insulin resistance. There is some research that shows that short sleep duration, so not getting enough sleep, actually increases your risk of insulin resistance and might exacerbate insulin resistance if you already have it. So, so important to make sure that you are getting enough sleep. How much is enough is different for each person, so you kind of have to play with it. But I'm going to at least share three ways that you can improve your sleep and hopefully get more of it. The first thing is to try to set a regular bedtime. So the more regular it is, the better it is. And that's because your body is going to be preparing to get into the right state for sleep. 
The other thing that you may want to explore is meditation before bed, especially a guided meditation. I can't tell you the number of times that I have done a guided meditation and fallen asleep before we got to the end of it. So that can definitely be, 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 be <laughs> that can, can I say that? That can definitely be helpful. There we go. Uh, the other thing is reducing your screen time. This is the one that I struggle with the most before bed. So spending less time on your phone, <laughs> spending less time on your computer, Ooh. <laughs> less time in front of your TV with Netflix on. Oh, I'm talking to myself right now. I really am. Um, when it comes to sleep is going to be super helpful because you're not having that light emitted into your eyes. And so as a result, your melatonin levels will go up and your body will be more likely to fall asleep well and stay asleep. <sighs> Again, talking to myself. The next thing is stress management. We all experience stress. This is not about eliminating stress. One, that actually wouldn't be all that healthy to completely eliminate stress and never experience any form of stress. Stress plays an important role in how we learn and it plays a role in performance. Our bodies kind of need a bit of resistance um, and the opportunity to adapt. That's how we get stronger. That's how we get better. But it can be extreme. It can go on unchecked and that's when we run into a problem. So these are ways that you can help your body get back from that state of tension and stress and back to a place of balance so that you can continue to function optimally. And so some of my favorite ways to manage stress, and the thing about stress management, it's also different for everyone. So it's something that you have to decide for yourself, but these few things may give you some ideas and inspire you to explore ways that feel good to you. Journaling, oh, I can't tell you how amazing it is to just be honest and open about what you're experiencing and feeling. There's something about seeing it on a page. You actually, a lot of times realize that it's maybe not as bad as you thought. Sometimes it is as bad as you thought, but the fact that you can contain it within words on a page means that you can eventually move past it. Um, so journaling has been great for me. Uh, therapy can be really helpful. So speaking again, honestly and openly about your experience, especially with someone who is not judging you for what you're experiencing can really be helpful. Um, and movement, which we're gonna dive into a little bit more, can also be helpful to manage stress. What are some of your favorite ways to manage stress? I'm curious, because I'm always looking for new ways as well. All right, so I mentioned movement during stress management. It's important on its own, in its own right. Movement is incredibly important. Movement does not have to be strict, hard exercise. <laughs> it can just be, any way that you move that feels good, it can be gardening, it can be dancing, it can be going for a walk, it can be yoga. We all know I'm a huge fan of that. If you want to try yoga, there are definitely tons of videos here on my channel so that you can dive deeper into yoga for PCOS or fertility or really any other women's health concerns. Um, but it doesn't have to be yoga either. Anything that gets you moving and feeling good is the right thing for you. So movement absolutely improves blood sugar balance and absolutely improves insulin resistance. So get moving. And last, but certainly not least, medication. Medication has a role in managing insulin resistance. I know a lot of people feel like if they decide to go the natural route, um, some of the lifestyle things that I've shared earlier, that they shouldn't need medication. Or if they get medication, that's because they failed. I don't think that's true. I think sometimes our bodies could use a little bit of help, and medication can be a part of that help, in my opinion. You have to do what's right for you, but if you have considered things like medication for insulin resistance, good on you for doing what is best for you and your body. Don't let anyone shame you or pressure you out of it if it's the right thing for you and only you and your provider get to decide that and ultimately only you really get to decide that. So metformin is the thing that is often recommended um, for insulin resistance and especially insulin resistance with PCOS. So that might be something that your doctor has recommended. It has one of the lowest adherence rates. So a lot of people have prescribed it, but not a lot of people actually take it because the, sim uh, the side effects don't always feel great. And if that's your experience, talk to your provider about it. You don't have to pretend you're taking it for your provider's sake. Remember, they prescribed it for your sake. So if it is causing you not to feel great, talk to them about it. Maybe there's another medication. Maybe there's a different dosage. 
maybe there is a way that you're taking it that they can help you work through. Um, so yeah, if it's not making you feel good, let them know. You don't have to just suffer <laughs> in silence. Let them know. And if you're not taking it, it's, it can have an effect anyway. So let them know that too. Maybe there's something else that you can try. Okay. So we have gone through my steps, my tips, um, what I typically, at least on the surface level, work with my clients through. And so I hope that it was beneficial for you. I hope you came away with a new understanding of insulin resistance and why it's so important to get it under control if you have PCOS. Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer them, especially uh, if you have video suggestions. I'm always happy to create videos around your questions as well. <sighs> Speaking very fast there. <laughs> Had to take a breath. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Or maybe it's night or afternoon. I don't know. Just enjoy life. I want you to enjoy life. Be well and bye for now.